My wife just said that I'm preaching up a storm. Well, I hear the thunder rumbling outside. They predicted we might have some storms coming through at 10 o'clock, but I hope that you are in a shelter right now. We are social distanced and we're also hunkered down for the storms that are coming. And we're gonna ask God in prayer as we begin our worship together that he would protect us and that he'll help us uh, during this time of difficulty. But we're thankful that you're tuning in and that we can be together, though we're apart physically, we're together in spirit. And so we look forward today to praying. Hope that you'll take time to sing either by yourself or with anyone that's there with you that would sing God's praises with you. And uh, we'll pray together, of course, study God's word. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning. And we want to make available the uh, bread, the unleavened bread, to those who might not have any. Uh, if you do not have any and you want to partake of the Lord's Supper today, then uh, you can call us at 1-256-651-5548. And if you need that number, it's on our website at churchofchristrandolph.com churchofchristrandolph.com any information there contact information you'll find uh, some helpful bible studies and other good information on our website and we appreciate bill miller and brian daniel working hard on that the website and we appreciate uh, the information that's there and hope it's helpful to you and uh, if you want to give of your means as we're instructed on the first day of the week we're not gathered in assembly, so we can't collect that, but uh, we are to lay by in stores. We've been prospered on the first day of the week. Every week has a first day, and so we are to give as we've been prospered. Some people are not prospering very much right now. Some have been laid off. Some are on an unemployment, and there's the thunder again, but uh, God expects us to do what we can do, and he doesn't expect expect us to do what we're not able to do. So it's not the amount that God is concerned about, but he's concerned that we understand our dependence on him. And with gratitude, God loves when we have that gratitude and God loves a cheerful giver. And so we give as we've been prospered. And you can keep that in mind as you are laying by in store and thinking back, um, thinking toward the time we'll be getting back together and so the five avenues of worship that we read about in Scripture, we can do that together in spirit and in truth, and that's what we endeavor to do this morning. So let's begin with prayer. And Before we pray, I'd like to mention a special friend of mine. He's a brother in Christ. His name is Arnold Singh. That's Arnold, and that's me. That's his parents. They're missionaries in Trinidad. And then that's the late David Hamlin. On the back of this picture, it says, Friends Forever, Priceless. Now, there's someone that's conspicuous by their absence in this picture, and that's the person who wrote Friends Forever, and that's the person that took the picture, and that's Champa Singh. Champa was a member of the church at Huntsville Park where I used to preach, and uh, she passed away suddenly last week, and uh, Arnold is left as a widower, and he misses her terribly. I'd like you to add, I'd like to ask you to pray for Arnold Singh as he is missing his wife and she died very young and died in her sleep. It was not related as as I understand to the coronavirus, but she had some other health problems that um, they didn't know about that um, took her life suddenly. And uh, he's very very heartbroken. We appreciate your prayers on his behalf. Also, his parents are down in Trinidad, and they're on an island there, and they've got about 600 days of food left, and they're allowing no shipping into that island right now. So they are concerned, and they are dependent upon shipping for everything, and, and, and air traffic and cargo uh, transportation. So please keep the Church of Christ and the people of Trinidad in your heart, hearts and in your thoughts and especially in your prayers, please uh, ask that, that God will intervene around the world to help people that are having difficulty during these days. So we'll begin our worship now. Let us pray together. 
Our Father, which art in heaven, we praise your holy name. We know, Father, that you are above sin because you are of pure eyes. Your eyes are pure, and you cannot gaze upon sin. And we know, Father, that because we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, we are not worthy to be in your presence. But because of the intervention of Jesus, taking our sin upon himself and dying in our place, he has made reconciliation between God and man. We're thankful, Father, that we can be reconciled through the redemption that's in Jesus and that Jesus the Messiah has made a way through his blood that we can be at one with thee again, holy in thy sight, because not of the fact that we have sinned or not sinned, but because of the fact that there is forgiveness through the blood of Jesus and what was impure can be made pure again. And we can worship you in purity, in spirit, and in truth. And we're grateful for this. Father, we're facing many challenges right now because we cannot see the future. But we walk not by sight, but by faith. And we trust thee and lean upon thee as we face the uncertain days. From our viewpoint, we know that you can see the end from the beginning and that you do all things well. And we pray, Father, that you'll help us to lean upon you and to know that you can give us peace in the midst of the storm. We pray for those that are facing the coronavirus. We're praising, we pray for others that are facing difficulties related to this, economic difficulties, health difficulties, and anxiety. We pray also, Father, that you will help us through the storms that are predicted today and that tragedy will not enter the lives of people as it often does on a day that is like today. And we pray, Father, that a repeat of what happened in April of 2011 will not happen. We pray, Father, that you'll spare us from tragedy and that you'll keep us safe so that we can look forward to days when we can serve thee with greater fervor and with greater desire. And we pray, Father, for Arnold Singh as he lost his wife at a very young age, and we know he feels very much alone at this time. But he has fellow members of the church that are his family. We pray, Father, we can rally around him and encourage him during the days of his loneliness and grief. We also grieve because Chapel was our sister in Christ. We're thankful for her life, although brief. We're thankful, Father, that her example to us can continue to inspire us to want to love our friends while we, while we can. And Father, we pray that you'll be with us as we worship today. Please focus our attention on things that are important. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. We hope that you have gathered the emblems of the Lord's Supper. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper about this time of year as they were observing Passover. He took the emblems of the Passover. They had before them unleavened bread and they had the fruit of the vine. And Jesus took these emblems and instituted these things as a way to remember him and all that he did to save us from our sins. And he took upon himself the cross and shed his blood. And we remember the body that was nailed to the cross, that he lovingly died in our place on that cross for our sins, not his own. And also the blood that he shed for all of us for the remission of sins. And so we're going to take these things. If you'll get yours out, and if you don't have any, we have some sanitary packages that were prepared with gloves and and put in these Ziploc bags. And if you need this unleavened bread, we can make this available to you if you'll contact us. Again, you can look at our website at churchofchristrandolph.com. We're now going to take the unleavened bread and read some scripture, and then we'll thank God for it and partake of it. I'm going to read from a Psalm of David written a thousand years before Jesus died on the cross. 
It is a messianic psalm. It looks forward to the time when Jesus, his descendant, would sit on his throne eventually, but it also looks to the time when Jesus would die on the cross. In fact, the very first verse was quoted by Jesus from the cross. And I'll read it together with you and let your thoughts go back to the time 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for our sins. And, Jesus, and David wrote this a 1,000 years before it happened. So it's amazing to see this. Let's read it together. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. You are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there's none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surrounded me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. They pierced his hands and his feet. He gave his body. And we partake of the bread in remembrance. Our Father, we thank Thee for this unleavened bread, which to us as Christians represents the body that was pierced. As they hung Him on the cross in a cruel way, He died in our place, taking what we deserved. And we thank You, Father, that to the one who knew no sin, He was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. We pray that You'll be with us as we worship You, in remembrance of his great sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Passover feast, Jesus also took the fruit of the vine and he gave it to the disciples and said, drink ye all of it. He wanted them all to drink it. And he said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And so we remember the blood that he shed, his precious blood. <clears throat> 